By now your gourd should be looking absolutely fantastic. So it's time for us to plot and plan where we're going to drill and how we're going to accomplish this pine needle rim on top. Here we go. All right, so I had to do a little bit of trimming along the top. The top wasn't exactly flat, so I simply put the gourd here, and then I grabbed my drawing device, which right now is being used to hold holiday ribbons as well, and I simply spun it around, marked everywhere with a pencil, and then I used the grinder a little bit, just a grinder, and any sandpaper would do, and then I sanded it, and then I turned it upside down and sanded it like this, so that the top is nice and flat. And now what I need to do is I need to mark. And if you're doing something kind of simple like a pine needle rim, and I think a pine needle rim is going to go with the style of this, then we want to mark equal spots all the way around. To figure out how to mark it, sometimes I just use my finger and go all the way around and then kind of adjust the last little bit. Sometimes I will use my thumb if I want them a little bit further apart. And this gourd is pretty good. I went ahead and I did do the painting on the bird. Some of them are mostly gray, some of them are mostly white, and some of them are mostly brown. So I tried to incorporate a little bit of each color in there. Just some really simple brush strokes, nothing too complicated. But anyway, now I want to figure out where is the very front and make a mark on either side of my thumb of about where I think I want the holes. And I'm going to go all the way around like like that and hope that it works out and if it doesn't work out <laughs> then I'll start again <laughs> I'll erase them and sometimes the last one you have to cheat it out a little bit but I'm hoping not to have to do that I'm hoping that this works out with an even amount Amazingly, it does. It worked out all the way around exactly. If it didn't, I would simply erase them, use a different finger, use something different, use you know the width of a knife or something smaller. These are a little bit wide apart, but I want to do a real thick wrap, and so I think this is going to work out just fine. Now the hole's got to be big enough for our needle and our thread to go through. So I'm going to use... I can either go with this one or this one. I'm not sure which one I want to go with. Um, this one is a 330 seconds, and this one is unmarked something. I think I'm going to go with the larger one just to make sure that my needle can make it through, that I don't have to slow down and do this again. So I've got this in forward. Sometimes you have to watch out if you're not clicked in. You also have to watch for walk. So I'm actually going to push against this a little bit. That was pretty easy. All right, I've got my holes all the way around. So the next step is going to be to find my needles. And I haven't done any pine needle weaving in a while. So I've got to find my needles. And once I find my needles, I know I want to use the black thread. What I've got is I've got some main wax thread, but I'll leave some links below if you can find this on Amazon or if you have to go straight through main thread. And usually when I use this, I'm able to separate this into the six strands than it is. But this time I might want to just work with strands of two to make it a little bit thicker so I don't have to go around extra times. I'm just going to go ahead and cut off a pretty good amount of this and get started on the rim. The hardest part is separating it. I could not separate it and just work with it really thick. I've never not separated it, so I feel like I want to at least separate it some. It just seems like it'll be really thick if I don't. Okay, this has got four strands, and so what I'm doing is I just hold them between these fingers and pull open. And I'm just twirling and I'm pulling these apart at the same time. A little bit hard to show you this. And what I can do instead of running two lines is I can just double it and run a doubled line and not worry about the tail. That'll be a good way to do it. So I'm slightly pulling apart with my thumb and other fingers and then just twirling it open. It just happened that this came and it was so thick, thicker than I wanted to use. So I've just been pulling it apart and using each of the four strands separately. You would think you could just pull toward the end, but you will end up with the biggest snarl if you do that. So now I've got one and I can do the other one in a minute. I've got to go find a needle. 
Now that we have our plan, it's time to actually start sewing the pine needles on the top. I'm going to do that in a separate vlog because it is quite a lengthy process and I want to be able to show you all of the details. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that your gourd is looking fantastic and you found some value in what you've watched so far. I'll leave links below for any of the items that we've used and I hope to see you in the next one. Please subscribe so you get notifications. See you in the next one that where we're actually going to weave the rim on the top. Bye!